So welcome everyone. This is our first fully online colloquium in this academic year. So it happened to me that I was a member of the selection committee, which selected uh, our speaker, Shubhayan Sarkar, as a PhD student in uh, our doctoral school. Well, at the time it were no, no, no doctoral schools, there was something else. And now I have pleasure to announce uh, his talk, uh, which is a talk just before uh, getting PhD, because uh, he's in the middle of this procedure. So uh, I guess this is a stressful moment for, uh, for Ryan, a stressful moment for supervisor usually, but try to be relaxed and uh, tell us what you are doing, what are you doing. So the title is Certification of Entangled Quantum States and Quantum Measurements in Hilbert Spaces of Arbitrary Dimension. Shukhayan, the screen is yours. Thanks, Isaac. So unfortunately, I couldn't be at CFT. Uh, because I had some visa issues, so I had to come back to India. But uh, hopefully I can uh, explain some of my work uh, via Zoom. So, uh, so as she had told, I'm Shubhan Sarkar. So I have been a part of the CFT family for the last four years. And I recently submitted my thesis. Uh, and I was working with Remic and mostly on uh, different tasks in quantum information uh, theory. Uh, and majorly on something which is which has um, uh, got a lot of attention lately in the community, which is known as a device independent certification. So, precisely speaking, I was working on a certification of entangled quantum states and uh, uh, quantum measurements of arbitrary of uh, arbitrary out, uh, outcomes. Uh, so, without taking much time, let me begin with the basics. Uh, I, so, I have a question that everyone yes. except the speaker, uh, please mute your phone because there was some noise. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. No, you you have to keep your your uh, phone unmute. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You other people. Yeah. You know who? Okay, let's continue, please. Okay, so uh, to begin with, uh, let me introduce what I consider as. Uh, the most natural picture in which any physical process can be modeled up into. So let's say that I have a black box here, which is here it's shown in green, but uh, let's say it's a black box and uh, uh, an input is given to it. So I know the input and I give it, give this box an input and it gives me an output. So based on this input and output relations, I try to model what this process inside this box can be. So so this is known as the operational picture in uh, quantum information theory. Now, in all the results that I will present later on, a natural assumption that we make is that the devices work on uh, quantum theory. That is, any state of the system is represented by a density matrix, which acts on some Hilbert space. Then the time evolution of these quantum systems are generated by completely positive and trace preserving maps. So for instance, uh, unitary matrix is a CPTP map. If a system is composed of two subsystems, let's say A and B, then uh, the quantum state of uh, the joint uh, system is belongs to uh, the tensor product of the individual Hilbert spaces of, uh, of A and B. And any measurement to observe the state of the system is uh, represented by positive operators, which are denoted here as EK, where K denotes the outcome of the measurement. And um, to, uh, to get the probability of, let's say, uh, the outcome K given the measurement M and the state row, in quantum theory, it's calculated using this function, which is like a trace of this positive matrix uh, with the state row. Now, coming to Bell scenario, which, which is a topic which won the Nobel Prize this year. So I will try to uh, give a brief account of uh, Bell scenario. So, so there are two separated parties, Alice and Bob, and a preparation device, P. So now this preparation device sends one system to Alice and another system to Bob. Now, Alice and Bob, both of them, they freely choose 
two measurements. So which are denoted here as A0, A1 for Alice and B0, B1 for Bob. And each of these measurements are two outcome measurements. So the outcomes are denoted here as zero and one. Now they record the outcomes and they, so once the experiment is completed, so they come together and they look at the, the joint correlation statistics. But it, what it means is that the probability of obtaining outcome A by Alice and B by Bob when they perform the measurements AX and BY. So if, if this uh, scenario is, um, uh, let's say all the states and measurements are within quantum theory, then this probability is calculated in this way. So that this row AB is the state which is being prepared by this preparation device and this uh, AX, A and B, y, B uh, denotes the measurement operators of Alice and Bob respectively. Now in the original Bell de derivation, if the assumptions of locality, determinism, and free will. Yes. May I pose a question? So uh, yes. could you show the, this previous transparency, this previous mm -hmm. slide? So I understand that the, 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 this formula, the last formula on the transparency. Mm -hmm. So this what we have on the left-hand side is the result, a result of an experiment. Yes. So this is what they counted, actually, by, yes. by, by recording. By and what is on the right hand side, the right hand, uh, so somehow it means that they, they do not know at a priori this row AB, but they want to somehow know it. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, they do not know, but, uh, but let's say that uh, this is like some quantum state is being sent by this preparation okay. device and they are performing some quantum measurements. In okay. that case, this, this is calculated. Okay, so uh, so in the original Bell derivation, if the assumptions of locality, determinism, and free will hold true, then uh, then uh, sorry, uh, these uh, then there is a uh, then there is a violation of uh, of this uh, this notion of locality. So what it means is that uh, so in quantum theory, these three assumptions cannot hold true simultaneously. So we have to give up either of them. So later on, there were some uh, more results which 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 uh, which were able to show the Bell uh, the, which were able to show uh, that uh, quantum theory, even with locality and free will, uh, does not satisfy. Uh, I mean, quantum theory does not satisfy even the assumptions of just with locality and free will. So and since free will is a very natural assumption in any of physics, so let's say that. What it means is that I can always freely choose the measurements, I mean, the experiment which I want to perform on the system. So, so in this sense, more, so the major majority of the people in quantum information believe that uh, what violates in quantum theory is locality. So, so, uh, so, so this means that there, uh, so this was the first discovery of uh, non-local quantum correlations and this led to like enormous number of later on it led to you know, enormous number of applications from like quantum computation, quantum cryptography, and several other quantum information tasks. So the simplest uh, inequality was uh, suggested a few years later by uh, by Clauser, who received the Nobel Prize this year, and Horn, Simoni, and Holt. So. They, uh, so uh, they were inspired from Bell's idea and they wanted to uh, find, to uh, propose an experimental uh, way to test Bell's hypothesis. So they proposed uh, an inequality of this form uh, where this A1 and A2 present the uh, observables of uh, Alice and Bob and and uh, they and this uh, and this particular quantity presents the expectation joint expectation value of when Alice performs, uh, let's say, now um, the measurement A one and Bob performs a measurement B one. So this function can be maximal uh, so uh, can maximally violated up to a value of two root two, which is known as the Seidel's bound by the maximally entangled state, and in the measurements are the Pauli. Uh, Pauli observables, which is like sigma x, 
sigma uh, sigma z and sigma x and for bob it's uh, the tilted versions of that okay. now um, so short remark quoking this yes. paper is maybe a good opportunity to mention the nobel prize last sure, year sure. so yeah so closer this year uh, received the nobel prize for proposing this inequality and also uh, experimentally demonstrating, although there were some loopholes at that time, but uh, he was the first one to exp uh, experimentally demonstrate uh, that nature is in fact non-local. And uh, later on, it was uh, it was the experiments were improved by Allen aspect. So, but still there were some loopholes, and all these loopholes were later on uh, closed in 2015 by the group of Zeilinger. And all, all the three, they received the Nobel Prize this year. So coming back to quantum non-locality. So uh, we also consider a weaker version of the Bell scenario, which is known as the quantum steering scenario. So the difference lies in the fact that one of the parties uh, is trusted. So let's say Alice, in our case, uh, we say that she is trusted, which means that we know what measurement she's going to perform on, on the received system. So again, the scenario is the same. Alice and Bob are spatially separated and they each of them receive a, a system, one for Alice, one for Bob, and now Bob chooses two measurements and each of them, each of these measurements are two outcomes. Now, based on what Alice, based on what Bob chooses and uh, sees the outcome, uh, um, Alice's states are being prepared in based on the choices and the outputs, which are denoted here by sigma yb, which belongs to the Hilbert space of Alice. Now, Alice perform since she is trusted, she can perform a full tomography on this system, and she can reconstruct this state. And so, this is uh, this was the standard uh, quantum steering scenario, but uh, we'd like to look at it in a in a picture which is very similar to well scenario in the like when let's say that Alice performs again some measurements AX and obtains an outcome A. So we again look at the joint, probab uh, jo uh, joint probabilities of uh, obtaining outcome A and B when uh, measurements AX, BY are performed. So this is really particularly useful for us in doing I will show on later on that uh, it is particularly useful for self test or certification of quantum states and measurements. So, now again, uh, similar to the notion of uh, local hidden variable models, so uh, there exist some quantum correlations that cannot be produced by local hidden state models. So, because here Alice is trusted, she always has a quantum state, but here, what we look at is whether this state can be explained locally or uh, whether, it can, whether it can or whether it cannot. So it turns out that in quantum theory, uh, it's not possible that um, there exists some correlations which uh, there exists some, um, some states which can be prepared on Alice's side by Bob, which cannot be explained using this local hidden state models. Now, the simplest steering inequality uh, Again, which is very similar to uh, the Bell, the CHS inequality, which I showed before, uh, is given in this simple form, where this sigma z and sigma x are the measurements which are which Alice performs, and b1 and b2 are the ones that Bob performs. So again, in using local hidden state model, the maximum value what you can get is uh, root two. However, if you take a state, the maximally entangled state, and Bob also performs the Pauli z and Pauli x measurements, then uh, the maximum value that you can get is. So coming to uh, the main topic of my research is, which is device independent certification. So, uh, so suppose that I have been given a device and, uh, it, and it promises that it generates entangled photons. So should I, trust the manufacturer or how, how should I verify it that it actually does. So now we can actually break the device and then check the source and if it's like a chi to crystal and then, we, okay, then we, we can say at, at least by some certainty that uh, 
it produces entangled photons. Or we can do a quantum state tomography, but uh, but again, there are some hidden assumptions there that we need to know the dimension of the system and uh, and uh, and also it requires a lot of complicated. Uh, I mean, uh, setup requires a lot of different measurements, and as the number of as the dimension of the system grows, so so is the number of measurements. Now, what we can do is to find a Bell inequality, and if uh, and we take these two arms of the sources and we uh, take it specially far apart, and then we check whether a uh, Bell inequality can be maximally violated. Um, I mean, violated or not. So, if it's it is violated, then we can be sure that the states are entangled because. Mm, Bell inequality cannot be violated by non-entangled states. So this is a kind of device independent check because we do not assume anything about what is going on inside this device, but we only look at the correlations which are being generated by these especially separated detectors. And, and from there itself, we can say some, uh, we can conclude some property about this, uh, about some, about in the box. Now, what is self-testing? So self-testing is the most powerful device independent scheme. So, so given a device, we can actually predict the state and the measurements on which this device generates up to some, up to some freedom which are here like local unitaries and also presence of some additional state on which these measurements do not act. By just looking at this, the correlations which are being generated by uh, those specially separated boxes. So how is it done? So first, a Bell inequality is maximally violated by a state and some measurements. And then if they are unique up to some local unitaries, if we are able to show this, and then the statistics would certify that state and measurements without any knowledge about the device. So this idea was first um, uh, formulated in 1998 by Mayer Sanya. So a sim taking a simple example, so again, we go back to the CHSH inequality. And then it was shown in 2008 that the maximum value of this, which is two root two, can be only achieved by a single state, which is the maximally entangled state up to some local unities and this presence of some additional degrees of freedom, which we cannot control. And the measurements are the, the Pauli Z and X, and again, the tilted versions of Z and X with, with uh, identity, and this identity acts on these additional degrees of freedom. So what it, so, uh, uh, so uh, if we represent the quantum correlations in, let, let's say in a two dimensional picture. So here is the local set and here is the, and here, so the Bell inequality is a hyperplane which cuts this uh, this set into two parts. So first is the local set and other is the non-local part. And when, when self-testing, when one proves self-testing about, uh, about uh, from this inequality, what it also shows that this well inequality, uh, when the quantum bound is reached, it touches the quantum set at only a particular point. So, okay. So, now, uh, going to, again, a weaker version of the self-testing, which is known as one-sided device independent certification, where again, uh, as I showed before, uh, that one of the, like in steering, one of the parties is trusted. Again, here, uh, uh, one of the parties is trusted. So for, uh, for us, we always assume that Alice is trusted, and then, uh, to, uh, to certify states and measurements, what we require is a steering inequality, which is being maximally violated by the state and some measurements. And then again, we prove that if they are unique up to some local unities, then the statistics that were generated would be enough to certify the device. Again, going back to the simple example, uh, so we have simplest steering inequality, and then this, um, it was shown in 2016 that this can be maximally violated by only states up to some local entry, the maximally entangled state. And again, 
and the measurements are the polygons. Now, an interesting part about using these schemes is that one can generate a true randomness, true and secure, and which is secure of any external intruder. So, for instance, uh, so in quantum theory, uh, we can generate genuine or true randomness in the sense that, so if I have access to a state, let's say the superposition state of zero and one, and I perform a measurement sigma z. So there is no way of anyone to predict that in my, uh, what, what outcome is this measurement going to give? So half of the times it will give me zero, half of the times it will give me one. So, uh, so quantum theory gives us a way to, um, to generate genuine um, randomness. And this is extremely useful for quantum crypto, I mean, not just quantum crypto, any cryptographic tasks. But the, there is a problem in this, in this picture is, let's say that I don't know the state uh, that is being in, that is inside this device. So now I'm being paranoid and I, let's say, uh, now I'm being paranoid and I say that, let's say there is some Eve who, who has access to this device. So what it means is that Eve has some control over this device and she can, she wants to know what, what my outcomes are going to be. So now if they share some, if they share, let's say that I and Eve share a maximally entangled state, then for, for uh, so it will look like it's completely random inside this box, but for Eve, uh, whenever there is a zero here, there will be a zero on each side also. And again, when there will be one here, there will be one on each side also. So she can in fact perfectly guess what is going on inside this box. So in that sense, even though it looks uh, completely random to me, but there is someone outside who is, who is, uh, who is able to completely uh, know my outcome. So, and then it is very bad for cryptography because someone else is, will be able to guess those um, bits or the outputs. So to avoid this problem, uh, it was proposed in 2010 that quantum non-locality serves uh, uh, the best, uh, best way till known till now to generate secure randomness. So for, for instance, uh, let's say that I'm able to certify what my uh, that what is the state uh, which is being gen which is being shared with Alice and Bob. So let's say Alice and Bob perform a bell test and using uh, using the results of self testing, they are able to say that this is my that they are sharing a maximally entangled state and also they know the measurements that they are performing. So now, because uh, even if Eve is correlated to the system, they cannot, uh, she cannot guess the outcomes of Bob because uh, she's not entangled with this source. Thus, uh, there is no way that Eve can guess either Alice or Bob's outcomes. And thus it provides a very uh, a secure way to generate true randomness. So here, uh, yeah, but here there's an assumption that Eve is also uh, performing some quantum strategies like some quantum measurements and some quantum on some quantum states. Now, uh, coming to the main results of, uh, of what I did in the past four years. So usually uh, uh, the idea of self-testing is very much restricted to uh, qubit states and uh, qubit measurements. Uh, and there are very few results which, which are applicable to higher dimensional systems and higher outcome measurements. So, so the aim of my during these four years was to uh, to find self testing schemes that are applicable to uh, states of arbitrary local dimension and measurements which are uh, uh, which give arbitrary outcomes. So for this, the first work which we did was. Uh, uh, to consider a Bell scenario where again there is a preparation device and there is Alice and Bob and then Alice has two inputs and Bob uh, also has two inputs and each of these measurements give the, the outcomes. Uh, so and then we considered a Bell operator which is uh, 
so which is uh, which we call as sat pap uh, based you know, which was uh, discovered in um, uh, found out in 2017 which is a it's a kind of generalization of the chsh inequality to any um, to measurements uh, with any number of outcomes so we uh, and this inequality has the this uh, inequality has the property that the maximum value of uh, this which is 2d minus 1 is obtained by the maximally entangled state so for us uh, it, it was beneficial to use this inequality so what we showed was that for any d uh, the hilbert spaces of alice and bob factor out as a d dimensional hilbert space with some additional Hilbert space, also known as junk Hilbert space. And then there exist local unitary transformations. I'm oh, sorry, there is some something missing here. So uh, there exists some unit transformation which brings B1 to, to Z and T. Let's so these are some D outcome measurements which are known as CGLMP measurements, but I won't go into the details of those. So for now, let's just take it some D outcome measurements. So V1 is Z and T and A1 is again a linear combination of those. And the state is given up to some local unitaries by the maximally entangled state with some additional degrees of freedom, which is junk state. So yeah, we later on, we moved on to uh, generalize this result to arbitrary number of parties. So for instance, the, the GHZ state, which is shared among arbitrary number of parties and is of arbitrary local dimension. And we were able to set as the state up to those local unitaries and the presence of this junk state. And this result was published this year. Next, we move on to certification of measurements. So, so usually uh, the problem that it, uh, it was more uh, People consider self-testing of states uh, in and then measurements, even though measurements also like if, so for co uh, generate correlations, measurements are also equally important to states, but there are very few self-testing statements which are which aim to self-test measurements. So so we focus on self-testing measurements and we and we consider a class of measurements which we call as genuinely incompatible. So, uh, so the scenario is again uh, very similar to the quantum. So yes, uh, just to mention that we proved this in the quantum steering scenario, not in the Bell scenario. So it's a one-sided device independent scheme. So here again, Alice is trusted and she performs like, uh, she choose, chooses N measurements and Bob again chooses N measurements here and each of these measurements give the outcomes. So, Inspired by the, some works in 2015, we constructed a strain inequality which is applicable to any uh, to measurements with any number of outcomes. And the maximum violation of this is. Um, uh, sorry, Shukhaya, maybe yes. I uh, lost because now we are trying to test uh, observed measurements. Yes. So yes. Yes. Numbers. Yes. So what is the assumption here? I mean. So yeah, it's class, a, there's class a, of uh, observed measurements, and we like to say. In which class the measurements which are in the device or the device is performing them? Yes, yes. So, uh, so what we assume here is this: is that Alice is trusted, so her measurements are known, but here Bob is untrusted. So mm -hmm. Bob's measurements are not known beforehand. So, and this this uh, preparation device, what state it sends, that is also not known. So what so what is known here is only this measurement which are being performed by Alice. And from the correlations, we will able to certify this preparation device also, and also this measurement device. Mm. So we'll be able to say that, uh, let's say the state cannot be something, and the, also the yes. measurements yeah, cannot yeah. be, and there'll be some class of the measurements. Which yeah, so we will exactly say right? that what the measurements and the states will be up to, up to some freedom, and there is some freedom of local unitaries, and also some uh, junks, junks which has on which these measurements act trivially, I mean, they do not contribute anything to the uh, correlation that we observe. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, so yeah, here again, we also even do not assume that my measurements are projective. So from the correlations itself, we, we, we are able to say that 
to achieve the maximum violation, the measurements of Bob have to be projected. And again, Bob's Hilbert space decompose as uh, a d-dimensional Hilbert space with some additional Hilbert space of arbitrary dimension. And then there exists some local unitary, which, which can transform this state to the maximal entangled state uh, and with coupled with some junk state. Uh, and Bob's measurements are the conjugate of Alice's measurements. So Alice's measurements were known before and uh, what we are able to prove is that up to local unities, it's just the conjugate of this is obsolete. So this paper was accepted yesterday to PRA letters. So, yeah. and finally, so uh, we also certify any bipartite entangled state using minimal number of measurements. So again, we consider the quantum steering scenario. So there is Alice, who is trusted, and she performs like two measurements, and each of these measurements are the outcome. And the, and what is not known is this preparation device and this and the measurements by Bob. So again, in this scenario, we are able to certify this preparation device and also the measurements which are being performed by Bob by just looking at the joint correlation statistics. So for this, we proposed a uh, steering inequality, which is maximally violated by uh, any two any two qubit pure entangled state and based so as these coefficients gamma and delta change so does the state which achieves the maximum violation and uh, alice alice is trusted and she performs in the d-dimensional generalization of z and d-dimensional generalization of x uh, now we, we were able to show from here again that Bob's measurements are projective. And again, Bob's uh, Hilbert space decomposes as, uh, uh, as a d-dimensional Hilbert space with some additional Hilbert space. And then there exists some local transformations, which again, transform Bob's observables to uh, the conjugate of Alice's observables. And the state uh, is any bipartite entangled, pure entangled state. So using this result, we, ne we then move on to certifying any rank one extremal POVM. So this was one of our main aims that we wanted to certify uh, a large class of measurements. And uh, for this, again, Alice has to, Alice is again trusted here and she performs now D plus one measurements. And Bob now performs three measurements. And this third measurement is the one uh, we, what we are interested in this scheme, which is this uh, POVM, extremal POVM. So what is meant by an extremal POVM is uh, that if every rank one extremal POVM can be written as a scalar product uh, with a, and the product with a projector mu. And these extremal POVMs are linear independent and they are positive and and they sum up to identity. So these, uh, so these ex extremal POVMs are special in the sense that any other POVM, any other rank one, so here we certify only rank one POV, um, extremal POVMs. So any other rank one extremal POVM can be simulated uh, only based on these extremal POVMs. So uh, taking a linear co uh, convex combination of these extremal POVMs, we can generate any rank one extremal POVM and any rank one POVM. So for this, uh, we also introduce uh, an intruder E as I showed before in the randomness case. So we introduced an E and uh, we, we say that, okay, let's say that my state is shared with Alice, Bob and also E. And then, uh, so then she needs to be undetected because if she gets detected, we can always throw away those sets of runs and we can start over again. So, so Eve has to choose some quantum strategy when where she remains undetected. So using just this inf information and that we certified the state to be this, any bipartite entangled state, we, we, were able to set, we were able to show that up to a local unitary, this POVM with Bob is the ideal POVM that we expect to get 
uh, with and it's coupled with some uh, additional identity which um, trivially acts on the quantum state which does not contribute anything to the statistics and then using this pov we will show that uh, we, we are able to generate the maximum amount of two log d bits of randomness so uh, so in quantum theory the maximum amount of randomness that one can get from a quantum system and some measurements is two log d bits so it was open question that whether one can uh, device independently certify uh, this maximum amount of randomness so this was the first instance that we are able to show it but yes uh, we show it in a one sided device independent scenario so uh, the security is a bit less compared to the device independent one but uh, but still it's a uh, it's the first step to show that and maybe uh, in future we will be able to show it in a fully device independent way so uh, yeah so that was it from my side uh, so this was the paper which which has all these results and that's it thank, thank you for your attention okay thank you it was uh, relatively quick as so we're not uh, interrupting you too much yeah <laughs> so now we have a uh, there's time for questions please I will start with a typical question, actually, because if yes. you go back to uh, self-independent, let's uh, say mm -hmm. device-independent certification, so this I want to yes. say, there is always a risk that in this device, the outcomes are, let's say, pre-recorded. That maybe mm -hmm. you are choosing, uh, clicking on this machine, uh, yeah. what measurements is supposed to be done. Yeah. But it may be that the machine is not doing any measurements at all that there is just a list of numbers which are chosen mm -hmm. depending on what you clicked and they are chosen in such a way mm -hmm. that you are tricked that they they look like uh, at the end as the valuation of some inequality but it's not but everything could yeah. be pre-recorded yes yeah so uh so in a sense it's it's not possible because uh, when we say that a bell inequality is violated, we, uh, we consider that there is no local hidden variables there. So when you say that something is pre-recorded, it means that something is happening locally on, on each of these sites. So Alice's, uh, so Alice's device is doing something locally and Bob's device is also doing something locally. <clears throat> so this scenario is uh, already modeled up into considering when we uh, take this case of local hidden variable model. So mm -hmm. in this case, we can never see a violation of bell inequalities. Okay, so to cheat, you would have to have some, um, well, if these machines of Alice and Bob, mm -hmm. if they are separated, yeah, so that they cannot communicate, then bell inequality is telling you that. Yes. Um, so there are some other that. cheating strategies, like there are some loopholes where people consider that maybe my, uh, so the choice mm -hmm. that Alice and Bob makes is not completely free so so they are somehow correlated and in that case uh, the bell inequalities can be violated even if uh, there are some pre-recorded uh, values as you said mm -hmm. so no, I was not thinking yeah. about such crazy ideas like, like yeah. more about practical ideas that maybe yeah. <laughs> devices they can communicate by i don't know bluetooth or something or yes or, yes or, or some optical fiber Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, depending on what eyes and Bob are, Bob are choosing as a measurement, yeah. then these both devices are choosing appropriate and pre-recorded outcome. But uh, yeah. if you are sure that they are not connected, then... Uh, so in the experiments, as far as I know, they, uh, they perform... Uh, so they consider the outcomes only if uh, the time gap is so low that uh, light cannot come from uh, one side to other. So, uh, so I, I guess they always take care of this uh, issue while performing these bell experiments. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that in our, any practical usage, uh, no one will be taking care about actually yeah. <laughs> closing such loops. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay, are there any other questions? So I will have a simple one. 
which of your results you consider as the most important? Uh, so for me, uh, in, so I, I would say I enjoyed most working on my last project, which was like showing the maximum amount of uh, random, uh, so certifying the maximum amount of randomness that uh, that could be generated from uh, like a quantum system. So uh, yeah, importance will be decided by everyone else. I guess I would say that I enjoyed it most. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, were you submitted this uh, paper? So this one is submitted to PRL, it's still under review. So we got one report and we sent it back and we are still waiting for the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, other questions, please? Well, if there are no more questions, then I think we can stop. Let's thank the speaker again, virtually. Thank you.